is I like to spray my whole body down with a cologne. Now, if you've seen my video on these spiritual colognes, I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out if you have not. I like to spray my body down. Now, these have that little hole that when you pour it out, you can waste a whole bunch. So I like to, I tend to purchase these spray bottles. Of course, I'm gonna drop them. These spray bottles, you can pick them up at a dollar store for maybe like a dollar, probably $2. Of course, I'm going to drop them and try to get the color that matches, I guess, the, the, the water. doesn't have to, or you could just name them. If you have any children in the house, save those. Uh, I have got dirt daughters. This was a gift to Terry uh, by Yvette. Uh, but save these bottles. These are awesome because they, they have an awesome atomizer. See that? Awesome atomizer. So if you have a daughter or female in your house, save these bottles these are perfect for that but if you do not then go to the store and purchase some of these what i like to do is fill them up and if i'm going out new year's eve uh, i like to spray myself down with this okay so i filled them up so now you will often go to botanicas and you will see sprays of all kinds aerosol sprays i don't really trust them i'd rather just get these bottles fill them up and this is which this is the violet water See, it's got this nice little mist. This is what, the Vetivert. See that? First of all, you're not wasting, okay? And it's good to cleanse and purify the whole house. Spray the whole house down with your cologne. This is the lavender, okay? And this is the sandalwood. You can use whatever you want. I'm gonna name them. So on the night of New Year's, you can go around after you cleanse the house and clean the house, purify the house, because you want to start the house, I mean the New Year with a clean house. Go around the house and, and, and just spray the house down, spray all your beds, your doorways, especially the doorways to attract good luck, to attract positive energy. Remember that just using it like this, you're going to waste a whole bunch and you want to save as much as possible. So I enjoy using these things. Uh, spray down the house, all the beds, make sure the house is nice and clean so that you uh, start off the new year with a brand, you know, clean house. You can keep these in the altar, okay? Use them when you need to spiritually cleanse or you can keep them in the bathroom after a shower. Uh, you can spray yourself down. Now, in New Year's, we're all searching for that uh, first kiss of the year. So I recommend you take one of these in the bathroom and you spray everywhere in your body that you want to be kissed except for your mouth anywhere that you want to be kissed on new year's eve you're going to spray down you know and just down all of your body get dressed use your favorite uh, perfume after that or your favorite cologne but spray down spray all over and don't you know you don't have to use it sparingly it's gonna be soft these are very soft and not so strong that you're uh, suffocating anybody so anywhere you want to be kissed on New Year's Eve, you want to spray your body down. So again, spray all your beds, uh, the entranceways to your house. You can keep these in your altars. You can keep these in your bathroom, wherever you want. You can leave them as is, or if you have different colognes or spiritual colognes, you can place the names of what they are. I'm, yes, spiritual waters, I'm sorry. So this is a good uh, way to start off the New Year's. Since we're talking about New Year's and how to bring in a positive New Year, I always tell my followers, bring, bring in the New Year with a new perfume or a new scent or give yourself a perfume. I often buy my own perfumes because I know what I like. My own perfumes or my own colognes, I know what I like. Uh, and if you see me talk about Di Diamond Diana, I've talked about this. This is a perfume by Diana Ross. And of course, there you go. I opened it. It was made for women. I love this stuff. Now, my godchildren, they say it smells like Gina Tay or it smells like old women. 
Terry loves this cologne. I like it. It smells like dark incense and amber. Um, and that's what's important. I like it. Terry likes it. It's grounding. It, it, it makes me feel comfortable. And that's what's important. When you, when you purchase a cologne or perfume, I tell everyone, buy yourself a cologne or perfume uh, to start off the new year. So I've already spoken about Diamond Diana, one of my favorites. Another of my favorites is, uh, I love this stuff, John Varvedo's Dark Rebel. Love this stuff. And John Varvedo's Dark Rebel Rider. I haven't even opened these yet, okay, because I wanted to wait uh, for the video. Now, I'm no perfume expert, okay? I'm just going to tell you what I smell. I already have these, but I'm going to open these up. I'm going to tell you what I smell. Again, I'm not a perfume expert. And again, these are not meant for everybody. Each person has their own palette, what they like, what they dislike. This is what I love and what I enjoy. And every year on New Year's Eve or Christmas, for a gift for myself, I get myself a uh, either a, a cologne or an, an eau de parfum, okay? Uh, because I like to smell good and I like to bring in the new year smelling good. All the qualities within uh, the perfume or the cologne, you got to understand the qualities of the ingredients, the oils that are used within it. Those qualities will uh, protrude within the cologne and protrude within yourself so i'm going to open these up and show you what they look like these are my favorite i love this stuff like again i said many of my good children don't like it i enjoy it terry loves it. it smells very dark one thing you'll notice the theme about my colognes is i love the dark you notice that the dark i like in uh, incense ambers oud tobacco pacholi frankincense i like to smell like that so i'm going to open these up and show you what they look like. So my channel is my not favorite. about selling perfumes or reviewing perfumes. It's not about that. I use these because they, they, they perfumes, colognes, they do comfort me. They're, they're part of my magic, of my spirituality. And here is Diamond Diana right here. I already spoke about Diamond Diana. I love this stuff. So I'm going to push this to the side. And this year I decided to give myself John Barbados Dark Rebel. And this is the bottle right here. It's got this nice uh, Flor de Lis. And this kind of nice, I don't know, I don't know what you call that. I don't know. Anyways, and then of course I got my Dark Rebel Rider, which just looks like a leather jacket. They're by John Varvatos. And the bottle is a nice leather I guess bottle. These are what? 3.5, 3.4 ounces. Okay. So here they are. I like them. I always give myself for New Year's and I, you know, a nice cologne. I believe that the properties of these uh, perfumes, they attract, especially for New Year's, they attract those energies that you want into your life for that, for that year. So I'm going to smell this one first. Again, I'm not an expert, so I'm going to tell you what I smell. I know what it smells like, but I'm going to tell you what I smell and why I like it. And then I'll so it. these are not for everybody, but I friggin' love the John Barbados, especially the dark collection. Uh, it just reminds me, you know, some, I, like the, I like to wear my dark clothing. I like my leather jacket, rock and roll, you know. And you know, always know that I wear my, my silver. So the original one, this one I think came out in 2015. I love it since it first came out. I think my godson, my godson David uh, and Marcella, they got me into this. So they're both very different. The first one, the Dark Rebel, which came out in 2015. Like again, I'm not an expert with notes, but I smell. Let me smell. Mm, I smell the woody, the woody Orientals. I smell that sweet tobacco. Uh, that I don't know that. Caribbean rum, the sugar cane, the cardamom, and the black leather. Oh, this stuff smells so good. This one, I put on my other wrist, and I'll probably uh, put the notes somewhere around here. But this one right here, I think this one came out 2015. This one came out 2016, 2017, not sure. They both smell very different. They don't last long in the body, which is good, and they wear close to the skin, so when you're walking, you're not going to suffocate anybody. 
But uh, the second one, Dark Rebel Rider, again, I'm not a perfume expert or cologne expert. This one smells like a, uh, a little bit. So the Dark so, Rebel Rider smells, oh, they smell both, they both smell delicious to me. You know, when I say delicious, it smells good, but this one's, it, they're both very different. Mm, they're both very different. Uh, this one smells more like, I smell like bitter orange, marjoram, leather, pacholi. I smell some, I smell some vanilla, some amber. Oh, they smell good. So start your New Year's with a new cologne, a new perfume, okay? Uh, make sure that, you know, just because it smells good on me, like I love Diamond Diana. A lot of people don't like it, but I like it. Terry likes it. When you wear your cologne, you, the, you, how do I want to say this? The cologne doesn't wear you. You wear the cologne. When you wear the cologne, you wear it with confidence. It is one of the most important magical ingredients that you have in your in your in in your botanica in your in what you you know own for magical items. Be, remember the people. The first thing is they do is they see you and then they smell you, and all these clones, they just remind me of magic and witchcraft and darkness and leathery and, and all that. So, again, just to really quickly end this section of this video, start off the video, start off the new year with a new perfume, a new cologne. And I tell everyone, pick your own. You know, everyone has their own palette. Everyone likes their own likes and dislikes. So pick your own and start off the new year with a nice perfume or a cologne. So one of the greatest... Uh, objects in a, a witch's arsenal of magical ingredients are their colognes or their spiritual waters. So in the 1960s, there was a song uh, titled Love Potion Number no. 9. Now, if anyone remembers this classic song, the song describes a man seeking uh, to help find love within his life. So he goes to a gypsy fortune teller who determines uh, to this man... Uh, by reading his fortunes, I think it was by palmistry, that he needed a love potion, which was, of course, love potion number nine. And so she gave this man uh, this potion, which was an aphrodisiac, which caused him to fall in love with everything that he saw. Okay, so here he was in this song. I don't remember the, the lyrics very well, but he was kissing all these women all over the place until, of course, he happened to kiss a male policeman. That's how magic works. And, uh, of course, the man uh, broke the potion on him, breaking the curse. But, of course, the man was arrested. So, love potion number nine was a spiritual perfume, a spiritual cologne uh, to cause an emotion or to cause, I guess, in this, in this matter, a love. So, since... And perfumes are not only aphrodisiacs, but they also they also work in the realm of aroma therapy. They should trigger within your memory something that brings a good memory or something that brings a comfort. So scents are made of molecules, and different molecules have, of course, different scents. And when you inhale a perfume or an essential oil, what you are inhaling is in actuality the uh, the molecules that the scent releases into the air, which then travels, of course, up your nose and gets stuck up your uh, nerve endings, which uh, sends signals into the brain. These chemicals are released, which cause different reactions towards different people. So, for some people, a rose might remind them of love and passion, sexuality, while a rose to another person can remind them of death or funeral. Same thing with musk. Some people love musk. Some people hate it. Uh, for one person, musk can, can represent or, you know, they smell musk and it, it, it brings them the thought of passion and sex. And to another one, musk can uh, make them run in just complete disgust. One of the greatest perfumes of our times is Coco Chanel number no. five, which was designed by a French a perfumer, um, stylist. Don't know much about her history, but I do know that the reason why she named her her perfume Chanel number no. five, because five, like myself, you can see, five and three. For her, five was a very magical, mystical, and spiritual number. She held great you know, she valued the number five as I value the number five and number three. So she valued that uh, as being 
a number of blessings, abundance, prosperity. And what better name to name her first perfume, Chanel number no. 5, and that's why she named it, because it was very mystical and magical and powerful. So in the world of spirituality, uh, I guess the world of the psychic, the world of the paranormal, there are five sentences, five senses. And I'm only going to speak about one, but I'm going to mention all five because why not, you know? The first one, of course, is clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is to clear, to clearly see. Then we have clairsentience. Clairsentience is to uh, clearly hear. We have clairaudience. Clairaudience is to clearly know. Then we have claircognience. Claircognience is clear knowing. And the one that we're talking about real briefly is uh, clair, clair, clairalience. I can never say that word, which is clear smelling or to smell an aroma from the world of spirit. So why am I mentioning clairalience? Well, I remember when I was younger, there was a medium that uh, whenever she smelled roses in the air and if there was no roses in the room, she would often say, death is coming. Uh, someone is going to pass. Someone is going to make the journey. And so whenever this medium would smell roses for her, it signified death. And as it so happened, every time she did smell uh, the aroma of roses, someone did pass away. Uh, interesting thing is the other day I was uh, messaging, I was text messaging one of my godchildren. And all of a sudden, I got the strong aroma of Pompeia. And I was like, I smell Pompeia, I smell Pompeia. And he said to me, which was very interesting, he said, you must be smelling my negrita. Because at this moment, I'm, I'm offering her some uh, spiritual cologne, which is, this is the cologne that she happens to like. So that was very interesting. Many times, aromas uh, or perfumes spirits have their own favorite senses their own favorite perfumes uh, you will often see uh, and uh, people get confused by that why do some negritas like this cologne why do arabians arabian spirits like this perfume why do congo spirits like this cologne or this perfume or this scent this could be seen in modern days today in today's society and how do you see that in today's society? Well, very simple. If you go to Brazil, one thing about Brazil, if you go to, you know, if you smell Brazilian perfumes, Brazilians love colognes that are very sweet. They remind me of, of, of cotton candy and sweet, sweet, very, very sweet perfume, uh, fruits. If you will go to the Mediterranean, uh, maybe if you go to Egypt, if you go to Arabia, they enjoy more uh, ouds. They love agar wood. Uh, they love that the myrrh, uh, the frankincense in their colognes. If you go to the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, uh, they like more uh, sweet, spicy, and citrus scents. Okay, so oftentimes you can tell a, a person's spiritual frame by the aroma they enjoy uh, again aromas uh, do to some spirits remind them of when they lived in life and certain aromas that they may have used when they were alive so they will enjoy these perfumes and then some spirits will not enjoy you know, of course, there's some spirits that enjoy this perfume and there's some spirits that do not, okay? Each person will have their own favorite perfume or their own favorite scents. Uh, oftentimes, you'll, you'll have a husband and a wife, for example. A husband, they like their masculine scents. And then, the, of course, their wives, they like their feminine scents. And oftentimes, you'll, you'll, you'll have a husband smell a perfume that their wife has in their bottle, they're like, oh my God, that stinks. And then the wife, it smells like flowers. It smells so feminine. It smells so this and this and that, whatever it may be. And then they smell on their wife and it's so, wow, that smells so good. It smells so sexy on my wife. Same thing with uh, Terry. Terry enjoys a lot of floral scents. He likes a lot of uh, gardenia. He likes a lot of violets. Um, one thing that I, I, I like about Terry or love about Terry is that he takes a drop of Coco Chanel, literally, and he places a drop on each earlobe. And it, it, I mean, it is a, it is marketed for female, but he wears it, he loves it, 
He wears it with confidence. It brings him comfort, and he smells delicious to me. I, I enjoy it. He loves his Shalimar, another cologne or perfume from the 1920s. Uh, Terry enjoys more floral, oriental notes. Uh, and that also shows or describes a lot of his spirits within his spiritual frames. Uh, often we wear colognes or perfumes or oils or extracts that our spirits uh, may have enjoyed in life. You will see me. I love my amber. I love my leather notes, my tobacco, uh, my rum, my sugarcane, my frankincense. I love all that. And so I don't want to keep talking about Diamond Diana, but I'm going to talk about that because Diamond Diana, uh, it does have all those aromas. One thing about Diamond Diana, when I first smelled it, it's delicious to me. I love this stuff. Uh, this is what it looks like. It was marketed for women, but men and women can wear it. This reminded me of something my grandmother wore when I was little. So whenever I smell Diamond Diana in the air, uh, it just smells delicious to me. Sorry about that. I'm going to open it. This is uh, the second bottle. It just smells delicious to me. It just reminds me of something my grandmother wore. My father also, uh, it smells so good. I can smell, the first thing I smell is the amber. Mm, I smell the amber and the sweet. It just smells, it smells good to me. It brings me comfort. Every time I spray it, it comforts me. It comforts my anxieties. And for another person, they might think it's disgusting and they might run away. For me, it just comforts me and it, it, it it brings me to a place of calmness, okay? This is what perfume or colognes should do for the individual that's wearing them. They are a very important magical tool in your spirituality and in your magic. Uh, so when you wear a cologne, usually they trigger a memory within you from your past, one, Two, many times people wear colognes that represent their spirit guides. A lot of people, um, if you have a lot of gypsy spirits, Romani spirits, you will often attract the roses, a lot of floral scents. If you have an Arabian spirit, you will smell the agar wood. If you have a Native American spirit, you will like the sages. You will love the sweet grasses, uh, the tobacco notes. So the, this aroma, uh, this perfume reminds me of that. Another perfume that I love, my father was into, similar scents that I was. And every time, I don't even remember the name of the perfume right now. This one right here, a lot of people compare it to Obsession, Women Obsession. Obsession by Calvin Klein, the female version, which I like the female version way better than men. I don't care if it's made for a man or woman. If I like it, I'm going to wear it, period, point blank, in the story. That's just the way I like Um My father, he loved his leathery scents as well. And so I love, a, a, while Terry, he loves his sweet floral scents. I like my, like I said, my frankincense, my myrrh, my agar wood, my leather, my tobacco, a, my rum, my sugar cane. I love those darker scents. That shows you who you're, it could show a person who your cuadro espiritual is, especially if you're a well-developed medium. Uh, because oftentimes, the, the aroma that you wear is something that will attract even your spirit guides. And even when I was younger, in my 30s, I used to wear uh, dirty English, you know, and, and obsession for men. And my my palate has never changed when it comes to my, my clones. And Terry has his palate. Sometimes I smell his perfumes in the bottle. I'm like, oh my Lord, why does he wear that? It stinks. But then when he wears it in, in his body, it, it smells good. I was like, Terry, what are you wearing? And he's like, well, I'm wearing, I don't know, let's see, a gardenia or whatever it may be. Uh, I'm like, oh my God, it smells so good on you. And he's like, well, you said it stank in the bottle, but on the skin, it smells very good. And I noticed that the perfumes that he chews or that he wears that are great with him really do show off his spirituality, the spirits in his frames, the spirits that are around him and surround him. Uh, so oftentimes aromas can indicate what spirits are around you. My follower is going to be wondering, why am I speaking about uh, New Year's and colognes? Uh, well, I'm going to be taking a break uh, for the December month. It's time for me to focus on my family and, and do some Christmas shopping. 
and clients. I got to focus on my clients. I will still be doing uh, readings and consultations. Here is my email. Please email me if you would like to get a reading. Uh, right there, a spiritual reading or a tarot card reading. I will still be doing uh, readings and still I will still be taking clients, but I'm going to be taking a break from doing videos until uh, I want to do a video for how to bring in the new year with blessings and prosperities and abundance. So since we are talking about the colognes, and this is going to be the second part of the clone, I did a video earlier about spiritual clones. There are certain ways that I use them. I use them like this uh, on on the day of, of the night before New Year's Eve. I always like to clean my house. I want to start my house fresh and clean, um, purified, cleansed, and I do a lot. And I also do a lot of floor washes. And I use creolina to remove negative vibrations. So I pass this in, in a floor wash, um, and then I mop down my floor. And this is very strong. This is just to remove. And then when you remove something negative from the house, you want to attract something positive uh, to the house. So then after I mop with creolina, I make a water. I add water to a bucket and I will add either agua florida or cananga. I will also or a tabaco de min, whichever you enjoy. Also, traveling. Uh, a lot of people travel during the New Year's. Uh, and sometimes you can't bring your 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 favorite colognes or, or your favorite perfumes, uh, you know, on, on an airplane. So I always, I'm always a person you will always see that I always have bandanas. I always pick these up wherever I go. I wear a lot of bandanas in my head. And I always have right here, pañuelos. Pañuelos are uh, handkerchiefs. One thing that I like to do, especially if I'm traveling, is I like to take my pañuelos. This is more for a man right here, and this is a, a, a female pañuelo. You can tell female because it's got the lace, and I did do a video on pañuelos. Pañuelos are handkerchiefs. Men's are more simple. But what I like to do, uh, I like to travel light when I'm traveling. What I like to do is I like to take my cologne, my favorite cologne, and I sprinkle them down. Literally, I sprinkle down, let me see, I'm going to sprinkle this one with, uh, right here. What I do is I sprinkle them down, you know, just get them nice and wet. And then what I do is I, I package these up in sandwich bags. So I have something to uh, that I'm not carrying so much. I have something that I'm refreshing that... Uh, if I'm on a plane, uh, if I'm traveling far, I don't want to carry too much... I place them in sandwich bags, and I also keep one of these pañuelitos within my pocket or my pants pocket or in my jacket, in a, you know, one of those pockets in my sleeve. Uh, and whenever I just want to refresh, I take it out of my pocket, I refresh myself, I cleanse myself. If something smells foul, uh, if I touch something that it, it feels dirty or, or it just doesn't feel right, I take this pañuelo and I cleanse my hands with it. Uh, and I know exactly what's going in my handkerchief. I like to keep them in sandwich bags. And I, when I travel, I, a, like I said, I spurge, I add the Florida waters. And then I just, you know, nicely fold them. And I fold them into sandwich bags. And I have something that's nice and refreshing. Something that I can keep uh, whenever I'm far away. And I just want to refresh. It's been a long journey, a long travel. Another thing. I am a person that I do not like heights and I do not like closed in areas, but sadly to say, I have to fly. So one thing gives me anxiety. Flying, the whole traveling bit gives me an anxiety. Florida water is my savior when it comes to traveling. It grounds me. It purifies me. Remember, I'm an empath. Being around a lot of people, you pick up a lot of emotions. You pick up on their anxiety and all that. I love to have my pañuelitos soaked up with the cologne uh, whenever I feel anxious. If I'm on a plane and I start feeling nauseous, nervous, I just want to just jump out of the plane, whatever it may be. You know, I smell it. Oh, and it comforts me. It just grounds me. Okay. Another thing is that I always wear bandanas. So I like to uh, splurge down my bandanas. And again, I keep them in sandwich bags. Okay. 
uh, I tend to only wear black, white, or gray. I don't really go for colors. But I spray, spray them down with some Florida water, put them in sandwich bags, and place them in my suitcase. And then uh, when I get dressed or if I'm going out on the town, I put a bandana in my pocket my jean pocket in my jacket or i tie it around my head uh and i'm always refreshed i'm always cleansed so these are night these are things that i always suggest people do pañuelos are very important in spirituality in caribbean espiritismo in santeria you will see pañuelos of all colors these are the ones that we use generally the most for espiritismo uh for working with the spirits but i love when i'm traveling mm. You know, this is uh, like a sanitizing wipe. You know, you're always going to have a sanitizing wipe in front of you. You know what's in it. You got your favorite cologne, your favorite perfume. Uh, and you don't know what you're touching. And, you know, and a lot of people, planes are full of germs. Let's, let's be honest. Planes are full of germs. If you're traveling by train, uh, a lot of people are sick. Uh, they're coughing. You have your pañolito. If anyone's coughing, it smells nice and good. You cover your nose, you know what I'm saying? You kill the germs, you protect yourself from germs. So this is another way that I use pañuelos uh, for the New Year's when I'm traveling and how I use them within my colognes for the New Year's. So I'm going to be taking a break uh, for the New Year's, but I will be back. I will be back around the last week of, after Christmas uh, to do a video on how to bring in the New Year's some simple uh, spiritual work or I don't know we'll figure that out when I get there but I will miss you guys and I hope you guys have a, a safe and happy holidays if you have not subscribed please subscribe please hit that like button please leave your comments down below please smash that um, notification button so that you can get notifications when I do future videos or when as they come out this is Sancista Brujo Luis happy holidays and have a happy and safe new years